What if I told you that there are two types of software engineers? The first one, they get rejected. Recruiters ghost them. They don't get interview calls. And then there's the second type. You know the ones I'm talking about. They're better than everyone else. Companies want them. Recruiters spam them. And they earn a lot. <laughs> so what makes them special? What are they doing differently that you and I and 99% of the other engineers aren't doing? And looking at the market with so many people applying to such a few jobs, you need to stand out. And after working with a few of these 1% engineers at Google and Amazon, I've realized that they do things differently that you and I aren't doing. There are two important steps. First one is to be a 1% developer and second one is to showcase yourself. I'll cover everything but first let's be honest. Doing some basic DSA, learning some new technologies, making a clone app won't get you that far because everyone else is doing it too. And it doesn't matter if you can't get a job or even interview calls right now because the market right now is really really bad. But right now is the best time to prepare yourself. When companies start hiring again, you will be so much ahead of others if you just do what I'm about to tell you. So let's start from zero. First of all, pick up a programming language. Now you might be thinking, hey Ashad, I already know a programming language. Tell me something new. But do you actually know it? And I'm not talking about knowing it. I'm talking about mastering it. Every word, every character, every symbol. Do you actually know what it means? What they do? Why is it written the way it is? Can you write algorithms from scratch instead of just importing it from a library? And if you're still a beginner and you're still struggling with what programming language to use and how to start, I'd suggest start with Python or JavaScript in that order. And you can always pick up something more complex like C++, Java or Go a little bit later. Because let me tell you, most people I know don't even know the basics properly. Sure, they can write some code, get something working, but it's usually trial and error. And the top 1% engineers don't run on trial and error. They know what they are going to write. They know why they are going to write it that way. And they know what libraries they are going to use. Like they actually know the path they are walking on instead of just aimlessly walking and hoping to get to the right destination. But how do you actually get good at a programming language? Well, I had this question for the longest time, so I came up with a system. This is what you do. Start with any programming language and pick up some documentation. And I'm not talking about the official docs. Most of the times they are really difficult for beginners, unless they are written for beginners. You can use something like learnpython.org or learnjs.org which are amazing websites if you want to just get started because reading good documentation will put you ahead of so many people and unlock your brain in such a way that you end up becoming a much better software engineer. Every 1% engineer I have met reads code and documentation, lots of it. And the more you read the documentation, the easier it gets. Learn about the internals of that programming language. How is the memory allocated? How are variables stored? What is the maximum memory a variable gets? What is the maximum value you can put in a variable? When do you copy by value and when do you copy by address? Most people just end up applying to jobs without actually knowing these nitty gritty details of the programming language they are working in. And when it's time to interview, they naturally mess up. And this is the checklist of all the topics that I definitely learn whenever I'm learning a new programming language and anything that is specific to that programming language. Then you need to move on to basic data structures and algorithms. And you need to be good enough to solve easy questions on Geeks for Geeks and Lead Code. You can't escape data structures and algorithms. And DSA is like any other skill in life, be it swimming, singing, dance, or sports. You'll suck when you start, but the more you'll do of it, the better you'll get. Here is my calendar of the number of submissions I did. And if you'll see that I've only properly done DSA for four months in 2020 during the lockdown. You can also see the exact list of questions I did. Yeah, these are not all the questions, but after this, I didn't have to solve a lot of questions on lead code or any other platform. And let me tell you, being good at data structures and algorithms unlocks something in your brain and you end up being a much better developer because you finally understand the complex complexity behind the libraries that you were using or the code that you are writing and moving from one language to another or picking up a new library becomes very simple. So you don't actually need to spend a lot of time learning DSA but you need to be very consistent with it. Once you feel confident in some data structures and algorithms, get out of the loop. And I don't mean watching reels or binging your favorite TV series, I mean get out of the tutorial head. I did it myself for the longest time. I used to watch so many tutorials on different languages and technologies. And I used to feel that I'm productive even though I hadn't written a single line of code. I kept on going from one tutorial to the next thinking that the tutorial that will definitely get me a job is just around the corner. But 
I knew what I had to do. I had to write code, lots of it. But I felt like I was learning and it made me feel productive. It was only after I started working with these amazing engineers, I realized it's not like they don't go through tutorials or read blogs or watch videos, but they always do it because they have a goal in mind, a project, a proof of concept, a code challenge, something that they need to solve. And the tutorial is only there to help them achieve that. And I'm not saying you shouldn't learn new things or follow tutorials because that will just stop you from growing. But try to separate time between learning something and actually doing it. And don't just stick to video tutorials. Try to read books, documentation, blogs, newsletters, and a lot of different types of content. So here's a simple trick that I use to implement a lot of projects when I'm watching tutorials. So you spend some time learning new things. And once you understand that, you go on and build something really, really simple using whatever you have learned that day. So let's say you learned about how to make API calls cool. Go ahead and make a stock ticker app that keeps a track of your top five favorite stocks and updates you whenever the value goes beyond a certain threshold. Or let's say if you learned about file management, try to implement a program that organizes your files based on their extensions. So all the images go into an images folder, all the videos go into a videos folder and so on. And while you're in the middle of all of it, learn Git and GitHub and post all of your code onto GitHub. It doesn't matter if someone sees this or not. And it's better to make 100 really bad apps than to wait for that one really amazing idea. But this alone won't set you apart. You need to think bigger. Don't think in terms of projects, think in terms of problems. What is a problem that you can solve for yourself with code? and then code it up. And here's a really good trick that can change the trajectory of your career if you follow it properly. Start posting about what you've built on Twitter and LinkedIn. Because you know what's more important than being a good engineer is to be able to market yourself really well. If you had to choose someone to work with, who will you choose? Someone you don't know anything about with no projects or no history or someone who builds cool things regularly, talks about them, posts about them, what new technologies they have tried. Did they like it? Did they not like it? Because let's be really honest, you could be the most amazing engineer in the world, but if people don't know what you're working on, what are your qualities, what are your amazing projects, you won't get offers. It's that simple. You don't even know how many founders and amazing tech leads and managers and engineers are there on these platforms who are always looking for someone to join their team. So you never know who's watching your posts. This is a really popular trend online that is hashtag build in public. And I really love it. People out there are making amazing websites, apps, startups, and they're doing it in public and they post their daily progress, what they've learned, what they've achieved, what they did that day. And people actually give them feedback and there's a really nice community around it. So once you start building projects, go ahead and actually build in public. And once you're doing that, you are in a very good position to actually contribute to other people's projects. And this is where open source contributions come in. And don't do this for the green dots on GitHub or any other platform, but do this to be a better developer. Go out there, find amazing repositories that you actually relate with see what bugs they have open, start with a really simple good first issue bug and then slowly make your way up towards more difficult bugs and by the end of it you'll be so much better than some random person asking for a referral in LinkedIn DMs because you'll actually have things and skills to back yourself up. And trust me on this, I've seen this happen. Recruiters and managers and team leads they run behind people like these and ask them to join their teams. While you're going through all of it, you'll get an amazing group of like-minded individuals. People you met through Twitter or LinkedIn or conferences or hackathons or even through your open source contributions on GitHub. And this will actually unlock a path to amazing jobs, remote opportunities because of the community you are in that will prioritize your knowledge and your technical skills over your college or CGPA or previous experience. All of this shouldn't take you more than a couple of hours every day and you shouldn't be spending more than that if you have other commitments like a job or college or school but even two hours a day will lead you to exponential growth over time but you could do all of this a lot faster if you know the right projects you should spend your time on so watch this video right here where i talk about really interesting topics which you can build upon which will really set you apart thank you bye bye